dear fellow student. Welcome to Jim Stanley Benito Channel. Today we will be focusing on cell membrane and transport. And we will study about the detailed structure and function, role, method of the cell membrane, which regulate the passage of material between the layers. As you know, each cell has a cell membrane, which provides the structures and regulates the passage of material between the cells and its environment. And the cell membrane consists of double layer of phospholipid molecules. And these structures arises because in water, a group of phospholipid molecules arrange itself into a bilayer. With that, to go into the detail, let's get into it. Cell membrane in transport. Every cell is surrounded by a cell membrane. There is also many membranes within cells. And the membranes around the outside of the cells is called the cell surface membrane or plasma membrane. There are also cholesterol molecules in among phospholipids. Protein molecules flow in the phospholipid bilayer. And the cell membrane consists of a double layer of phospholipid molecules. And this structure arises because in water, a group of phospholipid molecules arrange itself into a bilayer with hydrophilic heads facing upwards into the water. Hydrophobic tails face it inward, avoiding contact with water. Many phospholipids and protein have short change of carbohydrates, which is attached to them on the outer surface of the membrane. They are called glycolipid and glycoproteins. And there are also other types of glycolipid with no phosphate group. This is the structure of the cell membrane, which is already explained just now. Let's look into the, the fluid mosaic model. This is called the fluid mosaic model because fluid is actually the molecule within the membrane that can move around within the outer layers. And mosaic is actually referring to the protein molecules are dotted around within the membrane. And the model itself is actually, no one has ever seen membrane looking like a diagram. Molecules is too small to see even with the most popular microscope. The behavior of membranes has been discovered through the experiments. Let's look into the roles of the component of cell's membrane. There are phospholipids, cholesterol, glycolipids, and protein and glycoproteins. What is actually the phospholipids? Phospholipid is actually a form the fluid bilayer that is a fundamental structure of the membrane. Meanwhile, cholesterol, they will keep the cell membrane fluid. And the glycolipids is a cell recognition and accessions to neighboring cells to form a tissue. Meanwhile, protein and glycoprotein, it provides channels that allow hydrophilic substances to pass through the membrane. And this channel can be open or closed to control substances movement. Actively transport substances through the membrane against the concentration gradient using energy derived from adenosine triphosphate which is ATP, is the source of energy for use and storage at the cellular level. And the act as receptor molecules for substances such as hormone, which bind with them, and these can affect the activity of the cells. Cells recognition is a cells from particular individual or particular tissue have their own sets of proteins 
and glycoproteins on the outer surface. Let's look into the functions or how does the diffusion and facilitated diffusion works. This is we look or we call it these activities is called passive transport through cell membrane. Diffusion is actually a process whereby gases and liquid move freely. Molecules and iron are in constant motion due to each other or molecule and iron tends to spread out evenly within the space available. And this process is called diffusion. Diffusion is a movement of ions and molecules from high concentrations to low concentration. And some molecules and ions are able to pass through the cell membrane. The membrane is permeable to these substances and some substances cannot pass through cells membrane are said partially permeable. Example, oxygen is often at high concentration outside the cell than inside. Oxygen inside cells is being used up in respiration. The random motion of oxygen molecule inside and outside cells mean that some of them hit the cell surface membrane and some of them hit the membrane on the outside than the inside because more of them sitting inside. More of them is outside. So oxygen molecules are small and they do not carry any electric charge. So they are able to pass freely through the phospholipid by layer. And oxygen diffuses from outside the cell through the membrane to inside of the cell down heat concentration gradient. Meanwhile, if you look at the facilitated diffusion happen when iron or electrical charge molecule are not able to diffuse through phospholipid bilayer because they are repelled from hydrophobic fields. Large molecules are unable to move through phospholipid bilayer freely. Nevertheless, the cell's membrane contains special protein molecules that provide hydrophilic passageway through which these ion and molecules can pass. And this is called channel protein. And the channel proteins allow the passage of different type molecules and ion diffusion through this channel protein, which is called facilitated diffusion. Then let's look into the osmosis across the cell membrane. Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecule from dilute solution to a concentrated solution through a partially permeable membrane down a water potential gradient. Water molecule tend to diffuse down the concentration gradient across cell membrane. And the molecules are so small and carry tiny electrical charges, which is called dipoles, and they move quite freely through phospholipid bilayer of more cell membrane. The greater the concentration of solute, the less water is present. The water molecules is in a concentrated solution and less free to move because they are attracted to solute molecules. The concentrated solution is to have a low water potential. You can refer to this diagram during I explain. Okay? In a dilute solution, there are more water molecules and they can move freely. So these solutions has high water potential. Imagine cell membrane with a dilute solution on one side and a concentrated solution on the other side. The solute have molecule that are too large to get through the membrane whereby only water can get through. Water molecules in dilute solutions are moving freely and hit membrane than in one direction. More water molecules diffuse across the membrane from the dilute to concentrated solution than the other direction. The net movement of water molecules from high water potentials to low water potential down to the potential gradient. Let's look into what is the active transport across cell membrane. Active transport across a membrane is whereby cells are able to meet some substances, move across their membrane up their concentration gradient. If there is more potassium ion inside the cell than outside, the cell and potassium ion will diffuse out of the cell. The cell may require potassium ions, and the process is called active transport to move potassium ion from outside 
the cell to inside the cells again the direction in which they would naturally diffuse. And the active transport is done by carrier, which is transporter, protein in the cell's membrane. They use energy from adenosines, transphosphate to the ions into the cells, and the carrier proteins are ATP bases. So you can see first the glucose molecule enter the carrier protein. The carrier protein is actually each carrier protein is specific to one type of ion or molecule. Cells contain many different carrier proteins in their membrane. Second, the carrier protein changes shapes. The energy needed to do this comes from ATP. And third, the, the change of shape of the carrier pushes the molecule into the cells. Let's look into the exocytosis and endocytosis. What is called exocytosis and endocytosis? Okay, let's look into the exocytosis. Cell can move substances into and out of the cells without the substances having to pass through the cell membrane. In exocytosis, exocytosis, the object is surrounded by membrane inside the cell to form a vesicle. And the vesicle is then moved to the cell membrane. The membrane of the vesicle fuses with the cell membrane, expelling the content outside the cell. If you can see, this is the step whereby a vesicle is produced containing material to be removed from the cells. And then a vesicle moves to the cell surface membrane. And third, the membrane of the vesicles and the cell surface membrane join and fuse. And finally, you can see the contact of the vesicles are released. Meanwhile, in endocytosis, the cells put out extension around the object to be engulfed. The membrane fuses together around the object, forming a vesicle. First, you can see the cell surface membrane grow out. The object or solution is surrounded. The membrane breaks and rejoin enclosing the object or forming a vesicle. And finally, the vesicle moves inward and its content are absorbed into the cytoplasm. This is a little bit of summary of method of movement across membrane. You have a passive movement and active movement. So you have a features where we have diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, active transport, endocytosis, and exocytosis. But if you can see that you have a passive, no passive movement when they require energy input from the cells, and whereby you have energy input from the cell in the process of active transport, endocytosis, and exocytosis. And when involved, the movement of individual ions and molecules, diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, active transport will be involved in the movement of individual ions and molecules, but not in the endocytosis and exocytosis. In terms of the movement in through protein channels of protein carrier in the membrane, there, or there will be a movement through a protein channel in the process of facilitated diffusion and active transport, whereas on the other process will be none. And there will be an example of substance that move across the diffusion will be oxygen and carbon dioxide. Osmosis will be water. Facilitated diffusions will be iron, will be potassium and chlorine. And whereby in the active transport, Transport, you can see also potassium and chlorine. And while in the endocytosis and exocytosis will be droplets of liquid bacteria and some of the export proteins. With that being said, that's all for my presentations on the topic of cell membranes and transport. Hope you are enjoy with this lesson. And don't forget to subscribe to Jom Salila YouTube channel. Thank you very much.